Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, family. Most high in Christ, bless. I'm Captain Kabash from Israel United in Christ. And Maria. Uh, Officer Daniel. And today, uh, 15 minutes with a captain. Today's lesson, we're going to go into the American religion. What is American? What is the American religion? A lot of people would say that they don't have a religion, they're non denomination, um, or whatever, what they have. Uh, when you when you follow a tradition that is not yours as far as your ethnicity and you do these things without a thought behind wh where do these traditions come from and no research to validate your reasons for doing it and you do it traditionally every year annually with your family you're part of a, of a religion whether or not you acknowledge it or not and it is called believe it or not the American religion so let's define religion according to the Bible first and foremost. Let's go to the book of First Maccabees. Let's get chapter 2 and let's read verse 19. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 2 and verse 19. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Okay, so to bring you up to speed what's happening in the book of Maccabees. This is during the time of the Greek captivity. Israel was under uh, persecution under the Greeks, the Greek empire. Um, our sanctuary, our temple was being defiled. And so you had a Maccabean family raise up. Maccab Mattathias was the father of his five sons, which, have, uh, which then in time revolted against the Greek empire, which gives us the Feast of Dedication. But what he said to his sons, at this point in time, the king Antiochus, he was trying to bring basically a one world government to where everybody in his rulership under his domain would eventually lead their laws and follow his God. So this is what Mattathias said to everyone that followed him, his kindred. Read. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice, Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every one from their religion of their fathers, and give consent to his commandments. Now we know that at this time especially our forefathers didn't follow a religion. We understood that when Moses, talking about generations before his time, when Moses came down from the mount, Mount Sinai, he gave us law, statutes, and commandments, and we followed these things. So when he says, everybody that's of the other nations, they follow under his domain, they follow, and they, they follow him and follow away everyone from his religion of their fathers, it's talking about everything that they seen generally, uh, ge uh, generations growing up. Everything that their fathers do, they did, they doing the opposite by following Antiochus. So it's going into their traditions, their family traditions, um, their heritage, everything that they did to represent themselves as a people. They fall away from that and they consent to his commandments. Read verse 20. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren Walk in the covenant of our fathers. He's telling you what he meant by religion. The covenant of our, fa our fathers. The agreement that our fathers had. Read. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. That's the definition of that word religion. It says that we, that what? Um, read it again. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. And the law and the ordinances. Read on. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion. We will not hearken unto the king's words to go from our religion, our belief, our heritage. Read on. 
either on the right hand or the left or to the left we're not going to sway our religion our belief our tr our family tradition to go from either the left hand or the right to follow this king's religion or his belief system now let's go let's jump up in the chapter let's get um stay in the book of first maccabees let's get uh chapter one and let's read verse 10. the book of first maccabees chapter one and verse 10. and there came out of them a wicked root and what kind of man was he and there came out of him of them a wicked root a wicked root read antiochus surname epiphanes mm -hmm. son of antiochus the king who had been an hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. So I want to get I want to get this man's name and also the kingdom that he ruled over, which was the kingdom of the Greeks. Let's jump down to verse forty-one. Verse forty-one. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom. He wrote to his whole kingdom. Read. That all should be one people. That all should be what? One people. Read. And everyone should leave his laws. Or their religion. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. And this is what Matthias was saying. All the nations round about agreed to the commandment of the king. Verse 43. Yea, many also of the Israelites. And many of also God's people, the Israelites, who are who happen to be these people today, the so-called blacks and Hispanics, and Native American Indians, according to the Bible. It says, at this time, and that those names are down in the Bible, but according to research, those are the biblical Israelites. That's another lesson within itself. So it says, the Israelites also consented to his religion. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion, and sacrificed unto idols, and profaned the Sabbath. Mm. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the cities of Judah that they shall follow the strange laws of the land mm -hmm. and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they shall profane the Sabbath and festival days mm -hmm. and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Read. Set up altars. And set up altars. Read. And groves. And groves. And chapels of idols. So they even set up places where you should, you can worship idols. Okay, so think about it. This king at this time, he said that everybody should be one people. Sounds familiar, right? The American culture. One nation under God. To the invisible. You understand? It's the same Pledge of Allegiance. When we stand up and say that we are Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, one nation under God. Now, if we're not talking about the God that that's in this Bible that told us about Passover, that told us about the Feast of Dedication, what we're reading about, that told us about the Feast of First Fruits. What God are we referring to when we say one nation under God? Could it be we're following the same God that Antiochus set up back then to take hold of the traditions of this world that he was trying to set up to worship idols, set up chapels, and also what? Read again, read on. Verse 47, mm -hmm. set up altars mm -hmm. and groves and chapels of idols uh -huh. and sacrifice swine's flesh. And also sacrifice and eat things that's an abomination according to the Bible. Leviticus 11, um, chapter 11, verse 7. He set up idols that we should worship and things that we should eat unto these idols. Eating things that was forbidden to eat according to our law. Read. And unclean beasts. Uh-huh that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable mm -hmm. with all matter of uncleanness and profanation. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And he said it got to the point where they even told people, you were not supposed to circumcise your children. Today, in this present time, it is also known as barbaic. Or bar, or, what's the word? Barbaic? What's the Bar word? Yeah, barbaric. Yeah. Barbaric. <laughs> to circumcise your children. When it was a custom back then for us to keep, it's barbaric to do it. You, you, you're depriving that child of, that man child of, uh, of, the, uh, the, of the, uh, the, you know, the freedom that he could have had when he got older 
to, to, to make this decision on his own. You do that at a young age, you're depriving that child of his, his freedom. That's, that's how they picture it today. That's all going back to what Antioch should set up. All should be one people. Now you walk into the store, it, it, it's become tradition. We're going to read that later. That you, if you don't say happy holidays or merry Christmas, it is deemed as rude. Like, what's wrong with you? Mm. And, and show you that you don't have this freedom. You order something off Amazon, and the, pack in, the packaging tape is, is Christmas. It's, it's, it's light bulbs and ornaments that deals everything with the holiday season. You're going into the store, the grocery bags, everything, take, everything resembles the, the, the spirit, the holiday spirit that the American culture is in. That's called a religion. Even if you keep Christmas or not, it's still pushed in your face. So what, when you're following America's ways and you consent to every law that they push, uh, man with man, as the Bible deems as an abomination, or woman with woman, that's the American culture. That is a religion you're following, regardless of not you take hold of the Bible and read and say, you know what, I don't want to follow that, that's religion. You're already following a religion, believing in every law that America pushes. Right. Voting every year, you're a part of religion. If you take time to go out into a, uh, to a ballot and vote for what president or what face you want to push the same agenda that they have every other year, then you are a part of, of religion. That's a tradition. Let's go from that to Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 12. So it's, 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 it's reverse psychology to say you're not a part of a religion and you do these things willfully and nobody's forcing you to celebrate Christmas. You do these things because it's been instilled in you. You go to a store and shop. You can be in there for shopping for uh, milk and eggs. Mm -hmm. You hear Christmas songs. And then all of these, they, they'll play some, some enticing, like Boys and Men, uh, <laughs> uh, Silent Night. Right. And, and all of these, these, um, these spirits come back to you remember when you was a child, when you kept Christmas. It's all to keep you, it's, it's called, uh, what do you call it, a mantra. You play something over and over again, it plays on your spirit. You can't even watch television show. You listen to Pandora, the break commercial between the songs. It'll be a holiday commercial. There's no escaping this religion. This is why God said, come ye out from among her, be not defiled. That's talking about Babylon. Let's get that. Uh, wisdom of Solomon 14, 12. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So to give you an understanding of what happened in Genesis, the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. Okay, jump down. Uh, let's get uh, to verse 6. Let's get verse 15. Verse 15. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his own child soon taken mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man, mm -hmm. and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. And today they would say that this is the birth of Christ. December 25th. Christ was he was not born anywhere during the time of December. More so during the springtime, during the Passover, the days that he actually kept. So if we're following a day December 25th and they're saying this is the birth of Christ, put Christ back in, in, in Christmas. What religion are you following? What Bible are you reading? You don't read this in the Bible. But it's showing you how idol, uh, idolatry work, um, work. A man, a king, his, he was eventually going to die, so he set up his son as a god that should be worshipped. He made him himself, he made his son an image so that people would bring uh, or set up ceremonies that pertain to his son to worship his son. Read on. Verse 16. Thus, in a pro in process of time. And thus, in a process of time. An ungodly custom. The ungodly custom was the worshipping of man. Read grown strong it was grown strong was kept as a law that's why every time you go to a register they have to tell you merry christmas before you leave and this is the only time that you'll get a greeting you say hey any other day people act like they don't even hear you mm. but all of a sudden around christmas everyone to say a uh, happy holiday season or merry christmas everybody get into the holiday season but outside of that season it's back to you're nothing to me you're not important it's about what I'm doing, about what I'm doing, and forget about you. 
it's like it, it's 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 you set you snap into a, a, a trance soon as the season come around. Mm -hmm. That's an ungodly custom kept strong as a law. Something that you got to do. I got to get a tree this year. I got to find out who got the tree. I want a white one this year. I had an evergreen tree this year. I want the white. I want the white flakes on this tree this year. <laughs> the ungodly custom kept strong as a law. Read. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. And now you look in everybody's front yard, you have the what? The baby in the manger. That ain't Christ in that manger. That is, that is not something that Christ said to set up to remember him. He says, as often as you eat this bread and drink of this wine, you do show my, lip, my, you should, you show my death until I come. That's what he said, do this in remembrance of me. You don't read where he said, put a cross on, set up a tree. And, and have a, 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 a replica of the baby in the manger out in the front yard. That is not biblical. You're following a religion. That's the American culture. Read. Verse 17. Whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. Mm -hmm. They took the counterfeit of his, of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored. Read. To the end. That by this their forwardness, by this their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent, uh -huh. as if he were present. And this is telling you this, this, the psychology behind idolatry. Mm. The person don't even have to be there to tell you to set up this image. You know that December twenty fifth is coming around. You see the commercials. You hear the songs. It's time to get ready. Mm. Let me save up this money. Let me go get these gifts. Let me package it. Wait till the kids are asleep to get these things packed up so they won't see who, what is, what, what I bought them this year so they can come downstairs and open the gifts. It's all, it's all the system. It's all, it's all traditional. Even though it says at this time the king was not even present, they was doing it as if the king was there, right in front of their face, making them do it. Antiochus is no longer alive. He's not killing people to follow his ordinances. But we do these things because of tradition. America's not, he's not, they're not busting the people's doors saying you better put up a tree. No, we do these things because we already been persuaded to do so. We fell from the laws of our God. Now we're taking hold of, again, Antiochus or America's laws. You fell from your religion. You took hold of another. So even if you claim atheist, you're following Christmas, you're following a religion. You're following Fourth of July, you're following a religion. You're following Halloween, you're following a religion. And people will come up with the notion, I'm not doing this for, I'm not doing this for because of any God or anything. I'm doing this for the kids. Mm. You can tell yourself that if you want to. To me, that, that's what they call in psychology, uh, cognis, uh, what do you say, co co cognitive disannoyance. Mm. When you create a belief, when you create a, a, a comfort zone yeah. to make you believe that I have to do this because of these reasons. Mm. And a lot of people already know that these traditions are pagan. Let's get that last one, Colossians 2 and 8. A lot of people know that these traditions are pagan, so they'll tell themselves this, I'm doing it for the kids. And when you know good and well that there's other things you can do for the kids, Passover is a great one you can do for the children. Okay? A piece of dedication is another one you can do that's good for the children. And you don't have to lie to them doing it. Because these things actually happen within their history. Let's get that Colossians 2 and 8. Last one. The book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. So the God, the God told us to beware lest any man spoil. The word spoil means destroy. Read. Through philosophy. Through philosophy. And vain deceit. And vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the what? After the tradition of men. I'm going to read the definition of tradition. It says the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation or the fact of being passed on in this way. Okay? So that word also goes into your belief. So if you're celebrating these things annually by tradition, that's your belief. You believe if you don't do it, you're missing something for that year. Right. It says, by the tra after the tra traditions of men, or the religion, or the beliefs of men. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. And not after what? And not after Christ. So these signs that you see driving down the street, the candy canes and the nutcracker and all these things you see 
getting to wherever you supposed to be, that is a tradition of man and not of the Christ. That is a a devil's belief and not after God. Basically, that's what it's telling you. So the Bible tells us we got to beware lest any man destroy us. These things we heard from the Bible. This is not my take on it. This is not my opinion. That's the word of the Most High. All right? And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth